Hello and welcome to my new SQL Server Wiki. Today I want to talk about a very controversial topic in SQL Server, CX packet weights. CX packet weights occurs in SQL Server when you run a parallel execution plan where SQL Server uses multiple threads for its execution. People are normally afraid of CX packet weights. They see these weights accumulating in system OS weight stats and they immediately think that they have problems with parallelism in SQL Server. And what is the shorthand when you have such problems with parallelism? You use a max TOB of 1 at the whole SQL Server instance level. In this SQL Server wiki, I want to show you why CX packet weights don't, don't tell you anything about possible parallelism problems without any further detailed investigation. Let's switch now over to the flip chart to lay out the foundation of CX packet weights. I want to demonstrate you now on the flip chart how CX packet weights can occur in SQL Server during query execution. I'm displaying here a very simplified query plan which consists of a single threaded region at the beginning and also a single threaded region at the very end and in the middle we have here a parallel region. This just means that at some point in time the query optimizer thought it would make more sense to execute some operators in the execution plan with multiple threads. In my case, I have here four threads which are doing some work. Imagine they're performing a sort operation or something. As you can see, one thread has more rows than the other threads. Imagine thread 3 has to process 100 rows, thread 2 processes 80 rows, thread 1 processes, let's say, 60 rows, and thread 4 also processes around 60 rows. This means for a parallel sort operation that some threads are faster finished than the other threads. In our case, thread 1, thread 2 and thread 4 are faster than thread 3 because thread 3, thread 3 has, to do, has to do the most work. This means that thread 1, 2 and 4 have to wait until the slowest thread, in our case thread 3, finishes with its work. And what they are doing in the meantime? They are producing here CX packet weights. So we have here CX packet weights. It just means that they are waiting on the slowest one, in our case on thread 3. And in addition, and that's now very, very, very important, we have also the so-called coordinator thread in SQL Server. Coordinator thread. And that thread, the so-called thread zero in the execution plan, is the thread that runs the single threaded region in our execution plan. This means when we have a parallel region in our execution plan, the coordinator thread is doing no work because the coordinator thread waits until the parallel region is finished. And what is the coordinator thread doing in the meantime? The coordinator thread waits and also produces CX packet weights. This means even if you have a perfectly parallel region in your execution plan, where every worker thread finishes at the same time and where every worker thread doesn't produce any CX packet weights, your coordinator thread is still producing CX packet weights. For that reason, when you're looking to your weight statistics in system OS weight stats, you have no idea if you have problems with parallelism when you are seeing weights because of CX packets. That's the most important outtake from this session here. It doesn't mean anything when you see CX packet weights in system OS weight stats. You have to further analyze your workload to find out if you have really a problem with parallelism in SQL Server. 
Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I will show you how you can troubleshoot and how you can find out if you have problems with parallelism. For this demonstration I use the Condoso Retail DW database that contains a simple data warehousing database. As a first step I create here a stored procedure that runs a parallel execution plan in an endless loop. We will afterwards use this stored procedure to analyze the CX packet weights that occur during its execution. When we now run the select statement we can see that the query optimizer has chosen a parallel execution plan. The clustered index scan, the hash match aggregate and the gather streams operator are running in parallel across multiple threads and the remaining part of the execution plan one single thread, just with one thread. In our case this means that the coordinator thread has to wait until the parallel region of the execution plan produces some rows and in the meantime the coordinator thread reports CX packet weights back to SQL Server. But in this case these weights are good ones. I now execute the stored procedure in a different session so that we can now further analyze the CX packet weights that are produced by this parallel execution plan. When we look in the first step in the TMV system OS weight stats, we can see that the CX packet weights are getting higher and higher over time. At this point, in at this point in time, some people are sometimes getting very nervous and they think they have problems with parallelism. And to resolve that problem by disabling parallelism with a max TUB of 1 for the whole SQL Server instance. But that's not the preferred way how to deal with CX packet weights. When we look in the TMV, SysDM exec requests for our session, we can also see that the session itself reports a weight type CX packet. Interesting enough, the session is in the suspended state. The only thread that we see in SysDM exec requests is the coordinator thread that runs the single threaded region of the parallel plan. So we have here no further insight into the other threads that are running the parallel region of our execution plan. That's also a very important thing to remember here. We can only see all threads in the DMV system always waiting tasks. This DMV shows us the coordinator thread and also the threads that are running the parallel region of our query plan. The coordinator thread has always an execution context ID of zero. As we can see here, only the coordinator thread is waiting here. And we can also see by which thread the coordinator thread is blocked by looking at the column blocking execution context ID. In our case, the coordinator thread is blocked by two other threads, thread one and thread two. That are the threads that are running the parallel region. And finally we can look at the column resource description. This column tells us exactly which operator the thread is currently waiting for in the execution plan. We just have to look at the property node ID. In our case this property has a value of 4. When we look back at the parallel execution plan we can see that the gather streams operator also has a node ID of 4. Therefore we can see exactly which operator a thread is waiting for within the parallel plan. In our case we don't have a problem with parallelism because the CX packet weights are produced by the coordinator thread waiting at the gather streams operator until the parallel region of the execution plan has produced some rows for consumption. Easy, isn't it? CX packet weights don't tell us anything. We have to investigate our workload further to find out whether you have good or bad CX packet weights. The DMV system always waiting tasks is our friend here to find out the underlying root cause. 
As we have seen, there is always the coordinator thread involved that runs the single threaded region of the parallel plan, and the coordinator thread produces always CX packet width. Therefore, we can't determine that we have a parallelism problem by just looking at the weight statistics in system OS weight stats. That's one of the most important things to remember from this SQL Server Quickie. I hope that you have enjoyed today's SQL Server Quickie and I also want to wish you and your family Happy Christmas and a Happy New Year. Enjoy your time with your family over the holidays. Thanks for watching and see you again next year.